All right, I'm gonna hope that y'all can hear me okay, even though the compressor is running in the background. Um, most of you know I've been um, dealing with some health issues. So I'm just going to wait and confirm that y'all can hear me first before we get started. So let me know if you can hear me. I'm not seeing any messages. I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> messages. I can't do this on this side. Alright, I'm not seeing any messages. What's going on? Let me get my tablet. Alright, can anybody comment if they can hear me? Oh, yay. Now I'm seeing you guys. Okay, great. Stop it. My tablet's being stubborn. It won't let me. Okay, we'll just do it like this. Yay. Okay, so hopefully, I know you can hear the compressor in the background. Sorry. Um, I got got my little worker bees back there helping me to get caught up um, as you guys know laser cutting MDF is a, is a major part of my business um, and I appreciate all of you who support us in that venture it's greatly appreciated because we truly love what we do and we love inventing and creating new shapes and stuff based off of mainly your guys's ideas so thank you for always um, giving us the opportunity to serve you guys <laughs> all right so I've had a lot of questions regarding um, regarding these earrings and you guys know for those of you that know me and Stan we put a lot of effort into we don't just we're not just trying to I didn't just run out and buy a laser to try to make a fast buck off you and figure out another way to get rich it's there's so much more involved and we see what's involved in trying to help you guys succeed and one of those things is making sure you have all the tools necessary to succeed so not just shoving not just shoving a product and having you buy it but making sure you have the templates making sure you know how to use the templates making sure you have mock-ups and if I can't provide those mock-ups I'm gonna point you to somebody who can provide you mock-ups um, it, it, it's just a train of events that we create for you guys to make sure you're successful and it's based on our experiences and our on our side of the retail so with that being said these new earrings have been a challenge for a few and I'm hoping that I can help you guys get past the challenge um, and kind of understand the thinking to my madness when I create these templates so let's go ahead and get started I am working in Photoshop uh, CS6. I also have Photoshop CC. Um, I'm the most comfortable in CS6, but I also, if you look down here at my bottom toolbar, I do have CC as well. Um, I just, when it comes to this kind of stuff, I'm always probably going to revert back and do my training in CS6 because it's where I'm the most comfortable. But if you have a question because it's CC related and you don't um, see it, and the version I'm using, let me know because we can do a quick switch. I can go back and forth. So anyway, so this is CS6. When you get a template such as these Texas templates, you're going to see it exactly like this. Um, the left here is going to be, it's gonna show four layers. Now with Photoshop, if you're fairly new, Photoshop works directly with layers. So every new image that you add or line or whatever, it goes it will go on its new layer so with that being said i have a safe layer i have your left earring and i have your right earring 
if we click on these eyes to the right or to the left of the layers it turns off those safe layers and that is what you're supposed to do before you print turn that off click the eye just by turning it off don't delete it just click the eye to turn it off so because you want those there for future and the reason why the safe layer is there is so that you know where your text if you're putting text or what or pictures somebody's face could possibly cut off at uh, during the printing process so we always give you a little bit of a bleed so um, so that you're not li having to line it up exactly to the T so we give you a little bleed that will give you a little wiggle room um, but with that bleed you also have to have a safe area so you know where your cutoff is you're so welcome Sharla we're supposed to be at the lake today aren't we girl <laughs> um, okay so um, okay so here's what after you turn off the safe layers here's basically what you get you just get a teardrop shape um, so what I do is fill it in and the reason is is so that you can just so that you don't have to add something directly to this and try to make it fit but I'm gonna show you how to do that too because I know that's kind of important for certain styles so for this I'm gonna show you the basic and most easiest way to um, to get a design here so I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna go place now I know in CC it's called place embedded um, so I'm gonna hit place and we're gonna look for some images <clears throat> and let's see what I got let's see what I got um, let's say I just wanted to use this watercolor image okay now as you can see it's over the watercolor image is only covering one side so it doesn't color and that's where the layer placed it because I probably was clicked on one of these layers so what I would want to do is if I want to use this watercolor image and I want to use it on both earrings front and back when I'm printing then I would want to size this down to fit the earring and you can do that by holding the shift key I am using Windows the shift key and and stretching in the corners okay that will that will um, allow you to stretch the image without distorting it now in CC they have it defaulted to where you don't have to do that but once you've trained your brain in the older versions of Photoshop it's really hard to not do it that way do it the opposite way but in CC they they have a setting where you can change it back to do it the same exact way as you do it in CS6 so it just depends on which version you have Okay, so I have it right where I want it, and I'm going to drag the layer now above the left. Oops, we're going to hit enter so it locks it in place. And I'm just going to drag it right above the left layer. Not above the safe, but above the left, so it's going to be in between the two. And now what we're going to want to do is create a clipping mask. So to do that, you would you'd hit your, hold down your alt key for windows, and click between this background image this watercolor image and the left layer and as you can see it fits in perfectly okay so that's what a clipping mask is for those of you who do not know um hey congrats on getting photoshop jesse you're gonna love it just take some time to learn all right so now we've did that we did the left layer all right and if you're going to add text what i would do would be i would turn on my safe i would add another layer right above this one and so if you come down here at the bottom of the layers you've got some little icons to the right hopefully y'all can see that and if you click on the little icon just to the left of the trash can it says create new layer and that's what you're going to want to do I'm going to click on the text and because these are Texas, um, I'm just going to put some text in there so it'll fit. Um, give me a saying, uh, I'm from Texas, this is really sad. Alright, I'm just going to do y'all. Okay. And we'll give it something else. Give it something. 
Alright. Maybe a little something else. Uh, Alright, that looks good. That looks kind of Texas country bunkin looking. Alright, so what we're doing, what I'm doing here is I'm stretching to make sure it's going to fit in that Texas because that's exactly where I want it to be. So you can see the white Texas safe layer. I have it set at 50% um, at fill so that you can still see the background. If you were to turn this fill all the way back up, which you can do, it's going to be solid white. But when you get the template from me, I go ahead and set it at 50%, so it's a workable safe layer for you. And of course, even though the text is black, it, it's coming across gray because I have the safe layer in front of it. But the minute I turn it off, it looks black. Hello, Vicki. All right, so does anybody have any questions so far on the basic method of designing um, these? So once you print this, it should fit perfectly. The y'all should be in the Texas and fit perfectly, okay? Now, for those of you that are like, well, what if I wanna fill the center in with Texas? Like the, the state of Texas, the colors. So now we're gonna move on to that. And you would continue doing these, um, you would do these for the backside as well. So an easy way to do that would be to just duplicate these two layers so you can hit shift to select both the y'all and the watercolor layer and then hit control j and that copies them and made two more copies and all we're going to do is just drag that over and i don't think that went and we're going to drag it below and make it ab just above the right layer. So we've got to do a clipping mask again over here. So you're going to click the Alt and click in between those two. Now I would go ahead and favorite this video, you guys. Um, Facebook allows you to create collections for videos. I would create a Photoshop collection and just add this in there because I don't expect y'all to learn this on the first time around of watching it. Um, I watch YouTube videos all the time on how to do things, um, even still with Photoshop to this day. And I save the videos and I can't tell you how many times I have to go back and rewatch them a few times. So that's okay, just so you know. That is clearly okay, almost everybody does that. Um, so, we have the, so we have this masked over here. For some reason, I moved the wrong one and it jacked up over here, and that's fine. So now we're going to move this y'all copy back down over here, and it should show. But it's not showing because I left it, oops, I left it over there. So we got to move it. All right, and that's if you wanted text on the back end. Um, if you didn't want text on the back end, you know, the perfect, the reason, the, these double-sided MDF earrings are perfect for you, for your brand. So on the back side, you could put a tiny logo, and I'm just going to show you. You could put your tiny logo. And, give me a minute. Open, open sesame. Come on. So I'm just going to look for a small logo of me and Eldon. There we go. All right, so this is still kind of big. But you can brand these earrings with your logo just by putting a small little imprint on the back. Um, if you don't want it, you know, if you didn't want it so noticeable, we, you know, you could put it. Um, you could put it somewhere down at the bottom, make it even smaller, but this is great for you guys and how to brand your, your jewelry if you're buying the double-sided MDF, and that doesn't matter who you get it from. I mean, it's as long as you're getting double-sided, you can, you can brand it with your logo, and it just makes it easier for other people when they see somebody wearing it out and about going, where'd you get this? And 
I, a lot of people may say, oh, I got it off Etsy, but I can't remember this store's name. Oh yeah, it's on the back of this earring. Hold on, let me take it off and show you, you know. My template, this particular template, Eileen will not work in Corel. However, I will sh cover that in a minute about giving you a, P a PNG version. Now, I'm not very good in Corel, so I can't give you guys a full-blown training on that. But for anybody who uses Corel, should know how to use, uh, import the PNG version and, and manipulate it in there. Hey, Pat. Okay. So... This is just this part, all right? So now this was the easy part. Now let's get to the difficult part of manipulating the, the ear, the Texas on the inside. So we're gonna start with the left one first. What I want is the, I want, it, I want the Texas to be in the Texas color. So I'm gonna go file and I'm gonna go place. And I'm gonna go to my desktop. I'm gonna find an image that I thought I downloaded of Texas, not that one. Yeah, lots of stuff I just play with here. Lots of stuff. Oh, here we go. All right. So here's one that I pulled off the internet. Um, so it's pretty basic. It, you know, the color's not even really that great because of the quality. So when you pull, when you do file and you do um, place it's gonna pretty much lock this image down to where you can't do anything. So you need to rasterize it. The first thing you'll need to do is you'll right click on the image and hit rasterize later. That opens it up for you to manipulate and massage and do whatever the heck you want with it. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking my, my little, um, and I'm not sure what this darn tool, my magic wand tool, and I'm gonna delete the background. So I wanna delete all the white on the outside. So I just click on the white on the outside and then I'm gonna hit the delete on my keyboard and it's gone. All right, so that's just a, there's many, many different ways and methods in Photoshop to get rid of background and colors and stuff like that. That is just one way. Um, hey Kim, how are you? Hey Stan, I tried calling you earlier. I was gonna make you a part of this, but you wouldn't answer. Okay, so um, so now I'm just, um, I'm gonna resize it and I want it to fit in here as best as I can, okay? So that looks kinda good. That looks about right. Now, another thing you could do is you could also, this is just one shortcut method. I'll, sh I'll try to see if I can show you another method on making your own colors. Um, but for now, we're going to do this as the shortcut. So I have the Texas in here. Well, we want the Texas on the inside, but what if we want something cool on the outside? Okay, so not the same thing. So here's what I would do. So on the left layer, I'm going to turn off my, I'm going to turn my safe and I'm going to turn it all the way up so I can see it. All right. And what I'm going to do is I want to duplicate this safe layer. So by duplicating it, I'm going to hit Control J. So that makes two of them. Because I want to leave one there as my safe layer. I, wanna, I want one there as my workable layer. And my workable layer, I want just the Texas. So we have to cut out everything else but the Texas. So I'm going to take my lasso tool and I'm going to try to cut out everything and I'm going to try to do it as carefully as possible and I'm just basically cut the Texas now what I'm going to do is hit control J and that duplicated just the Texas okay so I'm going to turn these off and there you go I don't need that bottom line now we need to get rid of all this additional white. Um, one way you could do that is the marquee, uh, the magic wand. Oops. And you can just click on the white areas and hit delete. Now the ones that are connected still to the Texas are gonna grab the whole Texas. So you're gonna have to delete those manually. So you're gonna take your eraser tool 
and you're just going to slowly it doesn't have to be perfect either guys you're just going to erase all that nonsense okay and like i said it does not have to be perfect Let's zoom in so you can see. Zooming in also helps too when you're, um, you know, trying to make sure you get every, every last piece of it erased. That looks pretty good. Like I said, you don't have to be perfect. So now you have just the Texas, okay? <clears throat> so we still have the full safe area there. I didn't delete that, but I also have just the Texas. Now what we wanna do is we wanna open the colored Texas that I brought back up and we are going to, um, we're gonna do a clipping mask. So you're gonna click Alt the alt key for windows and you're going to click in between this layer which is the texas we just cut out and the colored texas and so that it fits in there now as you can see it's not fitting in and you have white so what you need to do is just drag it out and make it fit perfectly all right so that's how simple all right so that's how simple that is. And we still have the outline. So, oops, the outline. Now, what I would do is for the outline, I would still make it the full bleed all the way around. So I'm going to add another image. I don't know what we can add here to make this look cool, but I'm not being very creative but let's find something um, let me go to my let me go to my bag of goodies and see what we can find let's see what we got in here so we could make it a glitter color if we wanted I have a blue so, or we could do red. Let's do red and see what happens. All right. So I have the red, imported it in, and it dragged it above your Texas. So remember, Photoshop works in layers, and you can all you got to do is just rearrange the layer. So I'm going to drag it below the left layer, above the left layer. Excuse me. I'm going to hit that alt key and click in between the glitter and the left layer so that it fits in there perfectly. Okay. So now when it prints, it is going to print this as a whole, but keep in mind the earring is the actual full shape of this white area. So it'll cut off. So hopefully your Texas should be fine um, and shouldn't cut off because we made it we use the exact size that it is i know you can't see let's see right, what's going on there we go no there we go so that gives you an idea of how to how to manipulate these things basically all you're doing is duplicating that safe layer and and then once you duplicate it, you're going to cut out the parts that you don't need. So for the football helmet, it's going to be the same thing. So let me just go over here and we'll start over so that you guys can um, see one more time. So I have the football helmet over here. Um, and we would do the same thing. So I'm going to take, I'm just going to turn off so it's, there's no confusion. I'm going to turn off the right layers and only work with this left layer. Um, so what I'm going to do is duplicate again, which will be control J and I'm duplicating that safe layer. I'm going to turn off the, the 
the second one, it doesn't matter which one you turn off, so just so you know, but you need to turn off one of them. And I'm going to take this one and I'm just going to put helmet only. Just so we know what we're doing. So for the helmet only, I'm going to go ahead and turn my fill all the way back up so we know what we're working with. And I'm going to take my lasso tool and just go ahead and cut as much as I can around the helmet. And I'm going to control J. Oops. Oops, you got to have the layer selected in order for it to work. So I'm going to control J and as you can see it made another layer of just the helmet only. So again, we've got to work with moving and getting rid of some of that extra stuff. So what I do is I use my eraser tool and then I click in one spot and then I hold down my shift while clicking downward and it'll usually give you a nice even erase line so it does it kind of like in a line I don't know how to explain that to y'all somebody who's a little more technical with Photoshop probably knows what that's called maybe somebody like Marvin who got on a minute ago by the way Marvin had twins this weekend everybody congratulate him he is going to have his hands full for a while All right, so I think we are probably pretty much where I want to be for the helmet, except for maybe this part. Let me see. Oh, yeah, this part, we don't want this part in here either. Okay. Okay, so like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now, if you just want to make this a color, so on the background, let's go ahead and figure out what our background is going to be, and I'm going to go ahead and do what I did for the Fossil Ridge stuff. So, oops, wrong thing. I'm going to go file place and I'm going to do a, um, a purchase one that I like to use from Etsy. I think it's from Design Bundles. No. It is going to be gold. Where are you? It's my picky chicken. Okay, so I like to use this gold pack somewhere around here. So I'm going to use this one. It's one of my favorites right here. Um, especially for my daughter's high school. Alright, so just want to make sure it fits from top to bottom. Once we have it in there, we're, we need to mask it to the left layer. I'm going to hit Alt. And click in between them and that makes it mass so now you've got that background for the helmet <clears throat> um, oops this one's supposed to be a helmet all right so for the helmet we don't need we want to make this black their helmets are their football helmets are black so I'm just going to do a fill so I'm going to take my paint bucket over here which these little icons to the left they have little arrows so that means there's other uh, there's other tools that go along with it you just got to right click to bring up the other tool and bring it forward thank you Vicki so I'm making that helmet black and believe it or not remember it'll stand out because it's the black is not going to be sitting on the whole airing the, the inside of the teardrop is actually cut out as you can see right there so now we want to add some numbers maybe some shading all right well Amy what if we want what if we want our our face mask to be a different color because the helmet face masks are a different color well, again, you would just duplicate the helmet that we already come out by doing Control J. And now you're going to take 
your lasso tool and what you'll want to do is you'll want to cut just the mask out. All right. So once you have it lined up like that, then you'll do control J and that cuts, that makes just a mask there. Let me get rid of all this. Okay. I've got two helmet only, so I don't know how that happened. Okay, so there you go. So now you have the mask. So now we can make the mask any color. What if they have, they want it red? You can go red. Add it to the, add it to the thing. Now what I would do is, on the mask, I would go and clean it up just a little bit with my eraser tool so it doesn't look so choppy. And I would, the mask is not gonna go to the top of the helmet like that. Oops. There we go. But I think I screwed that mask up, so I gotta, no I didn't. So we're just going to erase all of this. And once you do this once, it's you won't really have to do it again because then you can come in here and change the colors if you needed to. So I actually deleted a little too much, so let's put a little back. Oops. We'll just step backwards. That will probably be the easiest. There we go. So I just, what I did is I just stepped backwards a little bit because I took off too much. And we're going to leave it like that. So that looks pretty good. Now, if you want to add some effects to the face mask and give it some depth, um, I love my FX tool. It's down at the bottom. It's pretty much where all the magic happens, what I always say. And you just click on that and you can play with all these different settings by giving it an emboss feature. You can change how much you want it to do it, the size of it. You can soften it. Okay. You can do it by, there's different pillow emboss, there's different features. Um, you can do it by up or down. I mean, right now I'm just showing you all the different settings that you can really do. I don't know how it looks. You can give it texture. Stroke is for the outline. So you see a lot of people who have outlines. Okay. Now here, this is something that I wanted to show you. So when you're erasing stuff, it's kind of, you need to make sure you're erasing every piece of it. To know if you've got every piece of it is really good by putting a stroke on because then you'll see the random dots at places. And when I usually do that, I'll go over here and I'll click, I'll just erase that dot and then I can go back to the stroke and turn it off if I don't want to use it. All right. But that helps me know if there was a random piece of color somewhere because that piece of color random, depending on where it's placed at, can print on your final print. So you want to make sure it's gone when when you're designing, all right? So that is pretty much how simple it is to, and, th and, and these tricks you can apply to anything you're working with in Photoshop. Um, I happen to be using the templates for my MDF earrings that I sell on my website at www.hellbound.com because a lot of people have asked, how did I manipulate the, the football helmet on the inside? Um, on the inside and putting the number and the name and all that good stuff and that's pretty much how I did it now if I go open it I think I still have that saved let me go see real quick um, yeah because I didn't want to delete them so okay so here's the one I pretty much did for the Booster Club on the earrings that I did on the Booster Club series of my Raising Hell webcast. So if I turn off the safe area, you can see. So I, I added shadows, like a white shadow on the inside. Um, but most, you can see where some of this is. The mask is black. 
I added this little gray area here. So, I mean, I did a lot more in-depth designing on this helmet to kind of make it look more realistic. But you, you, the possibilities are there for you too. You just got to play with it. You guys said you lost me. Are we still gone? Okay. I think that pretty much covers it. If anybody has any specific questions, I can answer those for you um, regarding this tutorial. If not, I'm just going to let you all go and hopefully this will help some of you guys that have already purchased these. And like I said, these techniques will work across the board for, sorry about the compressor. These techniques will work across the board for all of the earrings. So if you have any questions, now is the time to shoot them over to me. If not, we are going to hang up. And remember, um, in Facebook, I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to show you real quick in Facebook. You guys can save all tutorial videos. Let me see if I can find a video here. Um, so you can save tutorial videos. What if I wanted to save this one of Todd's? All you do is right click over here and hit save video. And then you should have video collections, which are going to be usually on my phone. It allows me to show which collections. There we go. Saved. So if you, on the left hand side of Facebook, if you clicked on saved, you have, like I have a bunch of Roland videos. I've been learning lots of stuff about Roland, vinyl stuff, um, all kinds of good stuff over there. So when I, need, when I see somebody that makes a post, like here's Khaki, she made a post about how to do something. I saved it because I wanted to go back and reference it. Uh, metal building sales at one time we were looking at that so you can save these all based on um, on what you want to do and it's the same for the videos so that's how you save them so you can go back and watch everything that you saved very quickly hopefully hopefully that answered any questions thank you Catherine I appreciate you watching Yes, Todd, I'm feeling better. I'm finally getting my blood pressure down. So, all right, guys, so I'm going to try to work on more uh, Photoshop tutorials. If you guys have ideas for me, let me know. I think the next one in my head, I'm going to be working on teaching you guys how to create your own wooden rustic frames that you see for purchase all over the Internet. Uh, it's super easy to do. You guys should be able to create those yourself if you want to. Um, so that's going to be my next goal. Uh, to work on some cool wooden frames and teach you guys how to make them and hopefully I'll have something like that for you all next week oh member of the month I'm going to announce it um, I don't want to announce it tonight because it's not there's not a lot of people on so let's announce member of the month on Thursday night on my live I will be back this week last week the headaches were killing me but I got it all under control so I should be back next week and I will be pressing Christmas ornaments yay I've been wanting to do that for two weeks now so I will see you guys all on Thursday and I hope you enjoyed this Photoshop tutorial thanks for watching everyone